gentlemen, welcome back. Hope you're having an amazing, blessed weekend. So, you know what I did today? I was I was getting that nostalgic itch. And um, I wanted to look up where I grew up in Tampa, Florida. So I went on Google Images and I typed in... I had to like type in my old church because I didn't remember the address. So I found it from there and I zoomed in. I went on the street view and I found the damn tree. The tree that I would climb. And it was like a massive tree. Way bigger than this. Um, I recommend that you do the same thing. Go on Google Maps. Find your first home. The first tree that you climbed. Because that shit right there, that's important. So we got to get into this, man. We got to get into this. But, um, you know, may I offer you a smoke? My good man. What are we having today? We're having a Nika Rustica by Drew Estate. Connecticut Broadleaf comes in a package called, I believe I'm going to say this wrong, but El Bugito. El Bugito. Which means witch doctor. Or as the natives of Esteli call it, they call it the little sorcerer. So, cheers. Hope you're having a great week. Have you ever used this kind of stuff? It's like a cedar wood and you light it up. It's supposedly better than lighting it up if you have this propane lighter. You don't get any of that too much gasoline. So you just spark it up here, let it burn for a moment. And then this has like a closed off kind of foot. And you just light it like that. Pretty unusual for a cigar. We'll see if that takes off. So there we go. <clears throat> Nika Rustica Drew Estate, nice. Um, man, these continue to impress me. I bought 10 of these for a little over 30 on cigarpage.com. If I'm gonna get cigars, that's where I'm gonna go. Or I'm gonna support a local mom and pop shop. But these bad boys, I had one of these recommended to me when I went to a cigar shop. And um, I had it and the price was, it was like, very like a standard i think it was eight to ten bucks there and i was blown away i was like this is easily 15 bucks easily 15 bucks easily 15 bucks continues to impress me and the thing with these is you gotta you gotta let them marinate a little bit they need to they need to cook dude like what i mean by that you put them in the humidor when i first got these i lit one up I'm like this don't taste the same way but they've been sitting there for a couple of weeks now, just kind of kind of getting juiced up and something changes. I don't know what it is, but something changes. And it's, it's pretty nice though. So um, yeah, seeing that tree, just fucking do it. Please just go Google image your first tree that you climbed because that's important. your first tree that was your first landmark your first you know expedition into the wild conquering that tree get into the precipice and i'm telling you man we me and my sister we used to go way up there we used to go way up there we would bring stuff from the house it didn't matter what it was we'd bring shit up there it just felt like a kingdom in the clouds i'm surprised i never fell out and broke my neck um, but I looked it up, and I was like, something in my soul was just like, yeah, dude, this is good. This is this is great. Maybe I'll drive by there one day. Maybe I'll visit it. It was the same field. I don't know if you guys saw the, I think, Life Changes Every October video, but the same field that 
the girl I had a huge crush on, Tanya, we would lay in this little divot in that field. I would hold her like this, her titties kind of resting against me. I was just a young man, first love, you know? She kind of got away from me. She left me, she broke me. And I was like only 13. But uh, yeah, nostalgia. You know, I think nostalgia is probably one of the most powerful drugs. Nostalgia is super powerful. I Sometimes I nostalgia hard. I'm nostalgic, you know, like, you ever just nostalgia really hard? Something, maybe a whiff of something, a girl's dress. Sometimes, like, I smell a woman's dress. Ugh. And I reminded of my preschool teacher when I first knew that I was a straight male. I was sitting on her lap in preschool. I'm not making this up. I was sitting on her lap and her perfume, something about her perfume and her, you know, just sitting on her lap. And I was like, I didn't, you know, I didn't like, it wasn't a horny, but it was like a, just a raw track, like raw something, something was going on in my young mind. So nostalgia, you know, it could be a video game, could be, could be a piece of art, a piece of clothing. You know, you think about nostalgia, man. What can we nostalgia about real quick? Those little, those little mats that you would see that had the whole city, like a, every kid's room that you went into in the 90s, had they had one of these mats where you would drive like a little toy car and it was like a city with roads and it was very vibrant colors. You guys got to look this up. Just kids carpet 90s. Like, I had one, my friends had one, everyone had this damn carpet in their room. We also had the same exact castle, where it was like a castle, and it had a catapult, and it would shoot this plastic rock. And there was also this prisoner part in the castle, where you would just put your little action figures, and you would lock them up in jail. You're in timeout, and you would come and get them. And uh, you would just role play, you know? It was like, it was amazing. I nostalgia hard when I think of meatloaf. And I, and I recently made meatloaf for the first time in years. But my mom was big on meatloaf. We had meatloaf at minimum once a week because it was easy to feed a lot of kids. Six kids, very simple meal. She would take turkey and she would take beef and she would combine them and she would make this loaf. And it was like the perfect thing. And recently it dawned upon me as I was nostalgic about this is like, I got to make meatloaf. It's the perfect meal. Just imagine just cutting up these, these slices of meat, just little protein slices, just giving them out here, take one here. You have one here to your girl, you know, take one, have some. And, um, uh, I made it and she loved it and I like it and it's delicious. So nostalgia, I wonder though, if nostalgia can be used as a weapon. Interesting. Very interesting. Can nostalgia be used against you? Can you nostalgia too much? Can you nostalgia too hard? Yeah, probably can. Probably can. Can you always be in search of the past? What was, what came before, you know? Can you always look at the past with rose-colored glasses? Mm. Yeah, you probably could. It's a lot to look back on, especially with the internet. But I don't think it's all bad. I really don't. I don't think it's all bad. I think you should have somebody in your life. Probably probably is an antidote, you know, like a solve to kind of the, just all the craziness. You look fondly on the past. I wonder if movies, think about this. You know how like people don't read a lot anymore? 
because it's kind of tough to sit down and read a book. But when you read a book, when you spend 30 minutes, when you develop that stamina, that reading stamina, 30 minutes an hour, you feel rejuvenated. Your brain is sharper for it. It's something like I really, you know, I really try to do in my life. And I've noticed as time goes on, like that reading stamina gets worse. Um, so it's definitely a good habit. And just to kind of, it's not every day that you get new stuff going inside of your head. It's often monotonous, the day to day. So getting new stuff is always stuff to chew on, stuff to think about. It's always like a good thing. Um, but I wonder if just like reading movies will be like this. I said this in our group. I was talking to Fabian. He's like, there ain't no freaking way, dude. Like, yeah, I, yeah, there is. Think about it. People don't even read books anymore. Eventually, movies are going to become this thing that, yeah, like still people still read books, but people still watch movies. But how much attention do you need to sit there for an hour and a half when your phone is next to you, when you could be in VR world talking to, you know, AI bots? Um, it's going to require a focus. So I think cinema and film is going to kind of take a hit here in the coming years. Because the attention span, he mentioned that there was, some guys were talking about this thing called, I think it was Ebba said, film review that the girl, like a lot of girls watch on YouTube or TikTok, where it just kind of gives you the trailer, the film, real quick. I can see people just like watching quick summaries, quick summaries of this, quick, the main points, not really going for the ride, going for the adventure, because it takes time, it takes attention, it takes focus. So I wonder, I wonder if film's going to die. What else is going to die? Hmm. Uh, I also think that we can overcomplicate art in a way. I wonder if you can. Can you overcomplicate being creative? I think so. I think it's very easy, especially in a world where you're trying so hard to stand out. I think you can very easily be consumed with overthinking and overcomplicating creativity. Um, you know, if you really think about it, being a human means that you have, we're, we're pretty simple. We're pretty simple. And it'll always, it'll always be the simple done well, that it becomes extraordinary. And, um, that is also relatable, which is a giant thing is just being relatable to other humans. And I think sometimes this art, this too abstract too far-fetched, too much CGI, too much craziness, too many edits gets away from that relatability factor, connecting with a human, connecting with an audience, with an individual. You know, it's one of the reasons I don't even edit my videos. It's just like, I don't like videos that are edited. Um, I like, the stuff I watch is like this, natural, talking. It's what I like. I, I think it helps... It helps me connect with the creator. It also makes me, gives me time to think, you know? So there's something there. There's something there to keep it stupid simple. That acronym KISS, keep it simple, stupid. I, I change it, keep it stupid simple. And and your life will be better for it. It really will. Because if you think, think about it like this, you see content. What can the internet what can this medium of the internet really provide? You don't get a somatic feeling. You don't get a touch. You know, we're not there yet. You don't get a touch. You don't get a, um, the hottest robotic sucking you off. Imagine when guys are buying robots and they're, they're dressing them up. By the way, I've stumbled in the depths of the internet where I've seen guys dressing up sex dolls and living with them. And like vlogging, crazy stuff, man, crazy stuff, you know, God bless you. So anyway, we haven't got to that point yet, but it could very well get to that point where you have this AI, this robotics, these, this complete experience. Cause right now it's not complete right now. You can, you can inspire the mind. And I've actually thought about this, you know, what can you really get? There's, I think there's three main things. So from the internet, you can get a sense of 
from content, you can get a sense of calm and you can actually experience this um, with ASMR, ASMR videos where they're like tapping on something. They're maybe just being calm, you know, maybe just maybe you're calm right now. Maybe you feel chilled out. You feel good. You're just smoking a cigar with the boys, having a little cigar with the boys out by the shed. feels really good you know you can be calm so asmr you can feel that though kind of kind of triggers that like when you're getting a haircut bzz, bzz. where'd you go to school little kid bzz. talking to your barber maybe gives you a little asmr that little buzz in the back of your brain it's a it like shoots up your spine maybe your teacher reaches over your shoulder she corrects your homework you know it feels good it, it, you get this like feeling i don't know that's my main that was my main triggers growing up. Or watching someone do something, you know, like watching someone work on a car, or type on a keyboard, or review something. You know, it gives you a feeling of calm, calm. So I think that, I think relaxation is a big one. Relaxation is, is something you can experience from art in all of its forms, content in all of its forms. From the internet, relaxation, that's one. The next one is uh, emotion. You know, we know this. I mean, obviously, you can watch a video that makes you laugh. You can watch something that makes you cry. You can watch something that gets you extremely hyped up, pumped up. David Goggins yelling at your face, fight your demons. So you can experience emotion. Um, that's a big one. I think that is also especially... Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm, I was going to say insidious. No, it, that's we'll get to the. Let's go on. So you got emotion. You got being. You got relaxation. The next one is insight. You know, insight. That's what the internet gives you. Art content gives you is a gives you insight. Insight into certain things, details, knowledge, power. Makes you think about things. Makes you see things you've never seen before insight so relaxation emotion of any kind and insight and i think the last one if you just really want to wrap it up is novelty which that one i do believe can be insidious because we're the only ones man more than all the kings and queens of old i could see all the wonders of the world from the, my fingertips right now i can see all i can see i can see hundreds of pairs of titties in like five minutes if I wanted to, compared to a lifetime that a king would have access to, you know, it that's when it gets a little insane. So the constant novelty, but there, okay, that again is uh, what the internet gives you, novelty. That's where we're at. Do with this information what you will. I find this very um, useful. Because I think that if you capture something, I think that, I think it teaches you a lot about humans. I think it teaches you what humans finds interesting. I think it teaches you how to create art. I think it, ha it teaches you how to be more human. Listen, humans are always gonna be, feel comfortable around people that are calm and that make them feel calm. Okay, have you ever lived with a cat? You ever been around a cat? I have a cat that, like, is it probably the best cat on earth? And whenever I lay down to read a book, I swear this this happens. When I have my phone, he doesn't come by me, dude. He like knows. He's like, get that demon off your chest, because I, you know, I don't want to be around that. And but when I when I'm reading a book every freaking time he just comes and lays on my chest he's just like right here it's like a you just there he is all right don't really want you here but there he is great cat love that cat cats are something by the way you know cat the egyptians worshiped them we'll get into this maybe in a separate video but cats the wild cats eating all the shit get in the garbage eating the rats they have this thing called toxic Plasma Gandhi, toxoplasmosis. 
toxic plasmosis. They're the only ones that can carry it, right? They can give it to you and it gets into your freaking brain. This is why they tell pregnant women, don't clean the cat litter, don't touch the cat litter because you can get this shit, you can pass it to your baby. And what it does is it makes you more risky. It makes you take more, not consider risk. You're more like likely to hit that full throttle going 100 down the highway and smash into a telephone pole. You're more likely to do some dumb shit. So this is a real thing. Okay, why the, Why did the Egyptians worship the cat? What did H.P. Lovecraft call his black cat? Um, You should look that up, by the way. If you haven't, what did H.P. Lovecraft call his black cat? So, there's something here. People say demons. Demons could be in the gut. You ever seen a freaking parasite under a microscope? There's this, there's this, it's not even that popular, but there's this video circulating around that demons could be parasites in the gut that actually influence one's behavior. And we see that with toxic plasmosis we also see that in in a different there's different you know the gut they say is a second brain i know I'm going off here this is supposed to be a first second video i don't care we're having cigar talk right talking about everything the the stomach is a second brain because all that shit in the healthy microbes the bacteria would influence how you think so if you have the wrong stuff in there that would be considered a demonic force that influences the way you think. Now, maybe they didn't have the scientific uh, jargon to kind of talk about this stuff back in the day. But guess what? They found, they found what to associate it with. And when we see these parasites under a microscope, they're like monsters, like cre creatures from the depths. Hellish. Okay? And um, you know what does cure it? Fasting. You know, why do you think the Bible says... Fast and pray. Well, you don't eat for some some time, and what happens? Your body starts excavating all of this. It starts pushing out all of this shit. It kills the parasites, and uh, guess what? Your brain, your brain starts thinking a little bit clearer. Maybe paradise is just when the parasites die. Very interesting. Whew. What do you think, dude? What do you think? Got anything to say on that? Put it down below. So, um, by the way, nicotine, you know, anti -pers uh, parasitic, I don't know. But they did say, I'm not recommending nicotine either. It is addictive, um, especially smoking cigarettes, trash, if you get addicted to that. But, um, <clears throat> it's getting a little cold out here, dude. I feel it. Scary times. But we're ready. We stay vigilant. You know, they said that people, though, that were smoking, maybe some nicotine users, the old C-19, were they impacted as greatly? I don't know. So I've been looking into some, to some of that shit, but not too deep, not too deep. Just a little bit, just a little, just to kind of keep the curiosity alive. So back to what I was saying is humans are curious, right? We're curious, we're simple. If you're calm, man, just like the cat, to bring it all back here, you're calm like people feel calm around you. You make others feel safe, you make them feel relatable. Part of that is not judging too harshly. Part of that is being strong. And being bold. And I think about that. Like really not judging people too harshly. You know, like imagine if I was to tell you, dude, you like cigars. And you're like, no, I don't smoke. No, I don't do none of that shit. Like, all right, great. Like, all right, cool, man. That's the first time we talk. And you're like, no, I don't do, I don't drink. I don't, I'm straight edge. It's like, if you really want to be someone that gains respect. If you want to be someone that people gravitate towards. You have to be relatable. You gotta be relatable. And part of that is not judging. It's not judging too harshly. Even if you disagree, I'm not saying don't assert your opinion, but, I, but I'm saying if you wish to be relatable, don't judge. Don't judge so harshly. Judge in your head if you want, but you know, stop being a cunt. 
It's 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 actually I think uh, I think a lot of intelligent men suffer this is that they see themselves as hyper intelligent, often in weak bodies, and they judge everyone for everything. You almost Brian said this yesterday when we were in our voice chat. We were talking to this guy. And he's a, a very kind young man, but he's super freaking smart. And John and and Brian said, he said, dude, oh, you almost gotta like be a little stupid. You gotta be a little retarded. You gotta dumb it down a little bit, man. You gotta dumb it down because you're not gonna be able to relate to other people. You're putting up too many walls. So that's that. I think there's there if you're struggling with people, I'm telling you, that may be it. You gotta let down, you gotta drop it, you gotta be relatable. Stop trying to always prove yourself with your intellectual wis ism. Ism. Because it's not that intellectualism, it's autism. And uh, you know, a lot of these guys online got a big chip on their shoulder for no reason. You know, let your speech guide you. Let your speech get you through the hard times. Let your speech connect with others. Let your presence be accepting, inviting. You know, come on, dude. Come on to me. Pause. I meant come, like, come here. Let me give you a hug. You know, it's all right. It's all right. We're here. Let's hang out. Let's have a cigar. Let's, let's party. Let's, let's talk. Let's get to the bottom of some things. Everyone those got this chip on their shoulder, they want to flex their their intelligent muscles you know so the next thing a lot to cover here we're kind of going all over the place i love it wow it's great so the next thing is that 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 emotion so a man has the ability to make people relate feel comfortable relatable now he brings in this sort of humor humor comes by the the wonder for life Holy smokes, dude. It's like, where's the wonder? Do you wonder? Do I wonder if you know? Remember that Kanye song? Um, You know, where's the wonder? Where's the wonder for life? Because when you wonder, you start to... You start to observe. Yep. That's what it is. You observe. When you observe, you start to understand. When you understand, you gain wisdom. You also gain perspective. Perspective allows you to look out over everything and laugh. Ha! Dude, you're like the guy on the mountain. You're just able to look at out over everything and just just see from a bird's eye perspective the ridiculousness of it all the ridiculousness of existence but also the beauty you fuse them together what is there humor 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 so that's you know we all like charismatic humorous individuals individual you know that's what think about being that's what you want to become as an individual but I also want a community because the individual is meant to be a part of a bigger body of something greater than himself. You want to feel that your indiv individuality is fused within something. But that's, you know, that's that's part of finding your purpose, finding your community, your tribe, your family and, and where you fit in, where, what work that you do, what morals, what strength you have to, you know, uphold what you got to become to do all that. But anyway, <clears throat> so individual. I divided from you all. See ya. You know, individual. I divided from you all. Wow. Is that just a coincidence? I don't know. But uh, individual. To be an individual means that you have humor, which means that you have perspective, which means you have philosophy, really, if you just want to sum it up. Um, philosophy. You've considered, you've examined parts of life. I think emotion, too much emotion, that's why emotional people are 
it's like, have you not thought about this at all? Hey, do you, you know, why, what are you getting emotional for, man? What are you getting emotional for all the time? Getting angry at everything, crying at everything. You need this to be happy. You haven't th thought that you don't need much to be happy. You must consume to always be happy. You got to think, you got to observe, you got to ponder. So, a man that that it has humor, that you know can can relate enough to hit at the emotions. And I'm saying this is the content online that does the best. And you know, maybe I'm getting, I'm losing you here, but the way I imagine talking just now is like you get your content that does the best. What is Mr. Beast content that gets hundreds of millions of views? What does it do? It gives you novelty. It kind of piques the curiosity, right? But it's it's filth. It doesn't make you think. It doesn't make you calm if anything it makes you really fucking cracked out like doesn't have a relaxing effect it, the novelty i think novelty is actually stressful i really do think too much novelty is stressful you ever been just ripping through your playlist and then at the end of a workout you feel cracked out you're stressed and i don't think that stress is a natural way to be i really don't i don't and i i don't think that we even understand how stressed we are in daily life that's why i recommend to you guys when i dressed up as the shaman the crazed death shaman i recommend to you guys the taurine because the taurine almost like it kind of calms you the fuck down and it makes you realize how stressed you might have been so a lot of guys have been reporting you know going to sleep and they're battling demons and you know, I often say purge, purge them out, dude. They're having nightmares, purge them. We're all on this taurine. It's been great. Let me know your, you know, the outcome of you guys taking taurine since I recommended it. Maybe you were before I recommended it. Damn Red Bull has it in there. So, Insight. Insight. If we're looking at perfect content, which gets the most views, I think really it's a combination of those because that's what the internet can offer you. Calmness, relaxation, humor, emotions of all different sorts. It can offer you insight and knowledge. And it can offer you novelty. That is what really the internet gives you. If you create... If you have things that you wish other people to see, the best content, I would say, from my observation, always contains an element of one of those. Perhaps the best content contains all of them. Now, I think that shows us what humans are drawn to and what they like. So if you wish to be a man that is impactful, that has force in this world, I do believe that you must be a sort of mixture, a soup, a stew, if you will, of these following things. You must be able to make people feel relaxed and comfortable. You must not judge too harshly. You must love them. You know, you must, it, that's a big thing because a lot of people hate, a lot of people hate themselves. You must love yourself. You must feel comfortable in who you are and who you're becoming. You got to have some humor. You got to, you got to laugh things off. You got to stop walking around with a stick in your ass. You got to like really sit us up on top of the hill like Zarathustra and, and ponder life and come down and bring fire to the people like Prometheus. You got to like be able to kind of hit at different emotions. Often comes by listening, by listening, by letting other people talk. A lot of people like to talk. I like to talk in front of a camera because people can't interrupt me. But often when other people are talking, I try to listen. <laughs> The next thing, you need to have some sort of insight. You need to be curious about life. You need to be able to speak and use your words and your, your mind and push that. In some way, convey, persuade. It's not hard. It's just, it's just simply staying filled with wonder and not getting distracted by too much novelty. I think too many, too many people are worried about the, the novel experience, providing novelty to others. But nowadays, like, 
You don't, you don't need a bunch of novel things to be a man of power, to, to be happy even in your own life, to be a good person, to be a, a man that gets what he wants. You don't need the newest cars or the most novel new clothes. You don't need all of it, dude. It doesn't matter. There's too much novel shit. Everyone's obsessed with, you know, be someone that gives, is a man that, you know, encompasses the other things. Is a man that encompasses the other things. I think you'll find a lot of fulfillment there. <clears throat> but anyway, man, this video is kind of going for a little bit. I'm just hanging out, talking with you guys. I got to get on a plane tomorrow. I got to get on a plane. And uh, we got a big meetup in Orlando. One of our biggest meetups. I'm super pumped. I'm super pumped. And we were talking about this meetup in our High Most Brotherhood yesterday. And this guy joined. And like I said, a very smart, intellectual guy. But I could tell that he's too in his head. And one of the things he said, one of the things that kind of sparked this talk was that, like, he wanted to be respected. And, and we kind of got to the bottom of it. It wasn't respect that he wanted. It was, he wanted, like, he wanted friends. And he wanted to have girls in his life and he wanted to feel connected and it, and it was like we kind of kept talking to him all the guys were in here Abba, Fabian, Brian all the all the G's you know all the the guys that have been there for a long time that are good friends and helpful it's like dude you just gotta like speak with enthusiasm don't speak with monotone don't like you know someone listening they want to put a bullet in their head have some life emanating from who you are. Have some thumos in you, dude. Like, if you're speaking monotone, what are you doing? Where's the life? Where's the excitement? They, where is the wonder? Because people that are filled with wonder and joy and, and they see a better life that they can create and the beauty that God has given us, they don't have this monotone way of speaking. We said, you know, you where is like the the humbleness, the humility, because we almost, I had asked him, sure, I was like, because we were talking about what are we going to get, what some of the things we're going to get, I was like, what's your favorite cocktail? He said, I don't drink. And it was like, okay, do you understand that if you ask this, if you're asked this by a group, what do you want to drink? Oh, I don't drink. Like, they're going to immediately feel judged. Now, I understand. I see this type all the time. It's the reason you know, I see this. I've been on YouTube for a while. I've talked to thousands of guys. There's an individual. There's a lot of guys that are online, very smart, go to school, and they're two in their heads. And I'm, I was telling them, like, dude, you got to be humble. Stop judging. Approach from a different direction. Like, stand up for what you believe in, but also be able to persuade and be able to relate. So that's that was really that. And God bless him. He's in our group. And I, I think he's gonna he's gonna start working out. He said he wants to be he wants to have more weight. You know, he wants to be stronger individual, not like a weak pushover. He said when people talk, they don't really listen. When he's talking to people, they don't really listen. And I said one of the reasons because you talk like a monotone, dude. Stop with the monotone. And have a little bit of oomph in your voice. A little ebb and flow. Ride the wave. Ride the tiger, baby. That's what we're doing, man. If you guys want to uh, come meet us, we got a we got a ton of amazing guys. Seriously, some of the best guys. I would have never believed the type of men that we have in our group. This group is not about me. This meetup that we're about to have in Orlando for the next four days that I'm going to be posting videos about is not about me. I am no one special. I am sitting here in my backyard smoking this little cigar, talking to you about things that go through my head. And a lot of you guys relate. And I hope that I can talk to you. I hope that I can relate to you. A lot of our guys in our group have taught me so much, have given me you know, so much back, so much joy, so much laughs, so much, uh, you know, insights, things to consider, think about, and talk to you about. So if you like that, come join us. This group is not about me. I'm no guru. which is another guy trying to bring the men together to unite the men. Hi, Thumos Brotherhood. I'll see you guys soon. Stay tuned. We're going to have uh, some cool clips coming from our meetup. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a freaking, it's going to be a time, dude. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. God bless. Peace.